Hello and a very warm welcome to The Green Bean. Thank you for joining me. My name is Katie and on this channel I make and share videos about my creative process and practice with everything from drawing and painting to knitting, spinning, sewing and lots more. This episode is a deep dive into my knitting projects. I've been doing a lot of knitting lately and I've got not one but two finished projects that I want to share with you. I'm also going to share a brand new cast on that I'm really excited about and towards the end of the episode I will give you a sneak peek at a new design that I've been working on as well. I'm lucky enough to live close to Dartmoor National Park here in Devon in the southwest of England and I try to walk out there almost every day with my sweet beloved furry friend Jack. I love the landscape so much and it's such a huge inspiration for all of my creative work that I like to make it part of my videos as well. Um, so I'm going to take you out for a little walk on Dartmoor before we dive head on into the knitting. It's actually far too hot in my studio today to be wearing any knitwear so I'm wearing my handmade sheep shirt in honour of the occasion of talking about so many knitting finished projects. Um, the shirt I made myself from fabric with my illustrations which you can find in my online shop. I'll pop a link down below. Um, let's get on with it shall we? My first finished project is my Dijon Foray cardigan by Carol Sunday. Lovingly called my Covid cardigan because I cast it on and knitted most of it when I was pretty poorly with Covid. Um, I'm now well on my way to recovery and my cardigan is finished. I am absolutely thrilled with this project. So thrilled that I cast it on, knitted the whole thing and finished it without even glancing at another knitting project. I was just having such a good time, I wasn't tempted away from this one at all, which is very unusual for me. I am quite distractible, but it was incredible to see how quickly this flew off the needles when I just focused all of my knitting time on one project. Obviously I was also poorly, so I had a lot of knitting time, um, but nonetheless it feels like it came together surprisingly quickly. Um, let's talk details. 
The pattern, as I said, is the Dijon Forêt cardigan by Carol Sunday. It was originally published in an issue of Making Magazine, but it is now available as an individual pattern as well. That's how I bought it from Carol Sunday's website. The yarns I used were two yarns held together from John Arban Textiles. I used Yarnadelic, which is a 100% Corriedale um, sport weight yarn. I used the colour Sunflowers in My Garden, which is this beautiful, rich and deep mustardy gold. And I held it together with Alpaca Supreme, which is another yarn from John Arban Textiles. That one is a heavy lace weight. So the two held together made something akin to a worsted weight, which is what the pattern called for. The colour of Alpaca Supreme I used was Kyanite, which is very much grey, but a grey that tinges ever so slightly green. And I love how the two look together, creating this marl, plus the texture of the two yarns together is really pleasing. I was really happy with that yarn choice. There are so many details about this pattern that I love. The most obvious one is this gorgeous brioche texture on the raglan increases. That was what attracted me to the pattern initially. Um, it's just a tiny detail in the rest of the cardigan, which is so simple and straightforward um, garter stitch. It was wonderful, gentle knitting while I was poorly. Um, and these brioche details were really very easy to execute. I am someone who's never knitted brioche before. It was entirely new technique to me and I didn't need to look up any tutorials or videos or anything. All the information I needed was right there in the pattern, even as a beginner. So that was really helpful. Um, one other detail that I love about this pattern is these little toggle buttons. They're actually part of the knitting pattern, so you don't have to go around searching to try and find buttons that um, match your project and fit through the buttonholes that you've made. There's actually instructions included in the pattern for making toggles out of the same yarn that you've made your cardigan from, so you know they're going to match. I think they're really cute and it's definitely a technique that I will use in other projects going forward as well. One final detail is this gorgeous pocket at the front. I love that it's just one because um, I like things to be slightly asymmetrical. It's got an echo of the brioche detail that you had on the raglan increases on the pocket um, and it's knitted in so there's hardly any seaming to do. Um, I love a pocket because I'm somebody who's always picking up bits and pieces and treasures when I'm out walking. I'm digging in here now, actually. Um, there's a feather in here that I found on our walk this morning. So the pocket is going to be useful to me as well as just looking really super cute. In terms of modifications, I hardly made any because... Um, I loved the pattern so much there wasn't really anything I wanted to change about it. I made the sleeves slightly longer, that's just for my body, I have long arms, and I intended to make the body a little bit shorter because I like my cardigans to be slightly cropped, however I didn't fully account for the weight of the worsted spun yarn that I was using and the stretch of garter stitch so it actually ended up being about the same length as the sample garment. So I'm really pleased that I didn't knit it to the length the pattern specified because then it would have ended up being below my hips and altogether much longer than I wanted. I don't dislike the length that I've got, but I definitely wouldn't want it to be any longer for my preference. So that was um, something that I forgot to account for because garter stitch um, stretches a lot and of course when it's holding its own weight it's going to become longer. So that's a lesson that I've learned. In terms of other modifications I loved the detail, it's just got this gorgeous rolled stockinette edge around the neck and the front button band um, and as the pattern was written it didn't have the same finish on the hem um, so I decided to add a rolled stockinette stocking it edge to the hem as well and to the cuffs. Um, both the hem and the cuffs I did just a row of plain stocking stitch before 
starting the reverse stocking stitch to um, just make this really nice delineation between the garter and the rolled edge. This cardigan was such a successful project. I really feel like it goes with almost everything in my wardrobe and I've been getting a lot of wear out of it. Even though it's the height of summer, we tend to go out for our walks very early in the morning and it's still cold. So a cardigan is always essential. I would like to make this project again, which is always the mark of a pattern that you really love. Um, I think I'd like to make a woolen spun version. I think it would be beautiful in a kind of crunchy, rustic, more textured yarn, um, maybe a natural colour, single breed yarn. So I'm going to give some thought to that. Um, but in the meantime, getting a huge amount of wear out of this cardigan. My second finished object is a project that I pulled from my pile of unfinished works in progress and they are the Birch Ply Socks by Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery. Um, according to my Instagram I cast these on in 2020, knitted a whole sock and the cuff of a second sock and then set it aside for whatever reason. Um, sometimes a project gets set aside because you reach a roadblock, you make a mistake that you don't want to rip out or you get stuck with the pattern. None of that was the case with this project. The pattern was great. I was happy with the yarn and the texture combination. I just must have got distracted. But it was really nice to pick out a project that was so close to being finished because it didn't take me long to finish them. I just needed to knit the rest of a second sock. Um, so the yarn is... Um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company's Natural Sock Yarn, which is a high twist Cheviot blend, I believe. Um, I don't normally go for a 100% nylon free sock yarn because I am hard on my socks. You've seen I do a lot of walking um, and not a lot of darning. So um, I tend to prefer socks that have a bit of reinforcing fibre in them. However, I've heard good things about this sock yarn and I was willing to give it a try, so um, I'll let you know how it goes. It's obviously nice that it has no plastic in it. Um, I love the stitch pattern on these socks. There's a um, one by one rib cuff and then this beautiful rib and slip stitch texture down the body of the foot. I made a couple of modifications. I did an eye of partridge heel flap instead of a slip stitch heel flap which is in the pattern and I changed where I placed the gusset decreases. This is just something that I do. It's my own personal preference for how to knit a sock. I place the decreases here along the sole of the foot rather than here along the top of the instep. I don't know why, it's just something I like to do and I think by the time I'd knitted the heel flap and turn for these socks I was so comfortable with the texture pattern I wasn't referring back to the written pattern so I just did my normal sock techniques down to the toe which is a barn toe which I learned from Kate Atherley's blog. Um, it's a way of shaping a toe so it's quite rounded, it actually fits my foot a lot better but the best thing about it is that there's no grafting required at the end. You just um, draw up your stitches like you would at the top of a hat and you don't have to do any sewing to finish off your socks which is great. I normally knit my socks with 72 stitches on two millimeter knitting needles. Um, so I went for the 72 stitch size of these socks and I just must have picked up the wrong needle size by mistake. When I got this project out of hibernation there were one and a half millimeter needles um, in the second sock that was being knitted. It was clearly what I had used for the first sock. So these are a very tight gauge on very tiny needles. It's meant that the finished socks are slightly tighter than I would like them to be, but 
you know, I'd knitted a sock and a half, I wasn't going to rip them back. So I just had to finish with the tiny, tiny, tiny needles. I love the cute colour of these socks. It, um, I obviously chose it because it reminds me of lichen and I really love how, it, um, how the yarn knitted up in this rib pattern. Would I knit the pattern again? Yes, I definitely would. However, Anushka has such a brilliant selection of sock patterns. They like strike that perfect balance between they look great and interesting, but they're not super complicated to knit. So once you've done a few rounds of the pattern, you know what you're doing and you can relax into your knitting. And I love that kind of knitting pattern that's kind of interesting enough, but not too interesting that you can't watch TV at the same time. So probably I would knit um, a couple more of Anushka's other designs before I knit these ones again. Now, if, like me, you are a huge nerd for Lord of the Rings, then prepare yourself because this cast on is going to be very exciting. First of all, it comes with a bit of a story. So I discovered through old episodes of the Fibre Trek podcast that there exists a yarn called Mithril. And not only does the yarn bear this name, which, if you're not familiar, is the name of a dwarven metal from the Lord of the Rings trilogy, from which Bilbo Baggins has a male shirt, which he then hands on to Frodo Baggins. Um, so it's a very important item in the story and, you know, part of a wonderful legend. So not only is the yarn called Mithril, and it is grey, but it is from the very sheep, the very flock that the elven cloaks from the Lord of the Rings movies are woven from. So given the level of nerd that I am, you may understand how excited I got when I discovered that this was a thing that I could actually buy and knit with. Um, so the fibre itself is um, a natural grey fleece, um, the Stansborough grey it's called. They're a distinct breed of their own, but they are initially derived from Gotland, so the fibre very much reminds me of Gotland. It's um, got a beautiful luster, it's very silvery, so it's perfect for mithril. Um, and the pattern that came to mind when I discovered that this beautiful yarn existed was Nightingale by Nora Gorn, which had been on the front cover of Pom Pom magazine, um, the issue that she edited um, several years ago. And I remember seeing that pattern on the front cover and thinking it looked very Lord of the Rings, very reminiscent of the flowing architecture of the, um, of the Elvish culture in the films. So that was what I cast on and I've been having an absolute whale of a time. <laughs> it's um, It's been a completely delightful knit. Um, I don't know what more I can say. I've just been having so much fun. It's really nice to knit some cables. I haven't done cables for a while um, and they're just so satisfying and I love how the texture is coming up in this beautiful yarn. You can see, 
it's got a lot of lovely drape. Um, that's in part because I blocked it. Um, when you knit cables, the fabric tends to suck and scooch in on itself. So I was getting a little bit scared. I had obviously knitted a swatch and checked my gauge, but the piece I was knitting looked small. So once, once I reached the point where I was going to start shaping for the armholes, I actually whipped it off the needles onto a piece of just waste yarn, um, gave it a bath and blocked it to check that it was coming out at the size that I wanted it to. And it is. So I'm very happily uh, starting to shape the armholes and knitting away on this front piece, no, back piece for my, what I'm calling my mithril jumper. Modifications, I haven't made any yet. I've been knitting the pattern exactly as it's written. However, it does come with a rather dramatic puff sleeve situation, which is not my cup of tea. So when it comes to knitting the sleeves, I'll be drafting just a plain um, fitted sleeve with a set in sleeve head, like the kind of sleeve that I wear all the time and feel most comfortable in but that's the only change I'm intending to make to the pattern. I don't know about you, but I actually love to cable without a cable needle. It was one of those breakthrough knitting techniques that took me from being a knitter who got annoyed and frustrated with cables to someone who actually really enjoyed the process. However, I will say on a couple of occasions with this design, I have conceded and used a cable needle. Some of the cables ask you to cross four stitches across four stitches, which is a little bit awkward when you're trying to slip them off the needle and catch them quickly with the other needle. So on a couple of occasions, I have pulled my cable needle out, but I've mostly managed knitting this pattern without one.
as you will know if you follow me on Instagram, I am obsessed with mushrooms and that obsession has not abated any since last year and the publication of my fairy ring cardigan design. So I felt that I needed to add to that design with some fairy ring socks. I'm also working on a fairy ring hat and you can tell probably by the way my face is lighting up that I am really excited about both of these new designs. I'm very pleased to tell you that this is actually a second sock. The first sock is with the person who writes up grades and edits my patterns for me. So um, yeah, that means this pattern is well on its way to coming out in the world and there will be new mushroom designs in my shop in the autumn, which is really, really exciting. Um, and this was prompted by the release of a brand new sock yarn from my lovely friend Rachel over at Daughter of a Shepherd. Um, she just released her new sock yarn, Drover. Um, she sent me, sent me some in advance to play with, but the yarn is out now and available. And it's gorgeous. It's everything I want from a sock yarn. It's kind of textured and woolly and warm, non superwash, but it does have some nylon for reinforcement for those of us who are a little bit rough and ready with how we wear our socks. I like to wear them in walking boots and take them out on the moors. So this sock yarn is just everything I ever wanted a sock yarn to be. Um, and it comes in three natural shades. So there's a darker one, this is the middle one, and there's a paler one. Um, so they were the perfect colours to use in my mushroom socks. Um, there are also, obviously, there's a red and a white, and there will be a little bit of green. Those shades are in Exmoor Sock and a couple of other bases from John Arban Textiles. So. Yes, having a lot of fun working on this new design and cannot wait to share it with you in the autumn. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Green Bean. Um, thank you for joining me for the knitting and me and Jack for the adventures out on Dartmoor. These videos are entirely supported and made possible by my lovely community over on Patreon. Thank you so much if you are one of the folks who contributes to this project financially. I could not do it without you. I try to make as many of my videos available for free as possible, but it does cost time and money to put them together. So thank you so much for choosing to support this project. If you would like to become a supporter, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Katie Greenbean, where you can get bonuses um, that I do um, ad free access, early access and extra Patreon episodes, as well as discounts in my shop for varying tiers of membership. So if you're able, please consider joining us over there. And if you're not able, no worries, you can still support this podcast by passing the message on, telling people that you enjoyed it. Um, in these days of algorithms and social media, making it harder for creative people to get their work out there and seen by the people who want to see it, word of mouth is one of the best ways 
of spreading the word so if you knew if you know someone who you think would enjoy my videos please tell them and that would be a huge help to me thank you that is all for this episode take care and i will see you next time thanks for watching bye